So now we know all about ion channels, right? Ion channels are little protein machines. They sit in the membrane. They're sort of like a tunnel through the membrane. Gated channels are like a tunnel through the membrane that's got a gate that closes it. And when the gate is shut, things can't go through. And when the gate is opened, things can go through. And then the rest of the name tells you more about it. For example, if I said voltage gated sodium channel, it's a channel that opens and closes, gated so channel. Um, it allows sodium to go through when it's opened, voltage gated sodium channel. And what opens it? Voltage, which is the electricity across the cell membrane. Boom, all right? Uh, now, uh, these are facilitated diffusion channels. So they are passive transport. And the ones we need to know are the ligand gated channels. They will open when the right neuro, do you think I can fit it in? Neuro, nope, neurotransmitter. Ah, hey, when the right neurotransmitter binds to the channel. The neurotransmitter would be the ligand in the ligand gated channel. Then we've got voltage gated channels. They will open up when the electricity across the membrane is just right. We're not gonna talk about these guys today, but the ones that open and close randomly get called leakage channels. And the ones that you particularly need to know, let's see if we, here we go. The ligand gated channels, we're going to be talking about ligand gated sodium channels and ligand gated chloride channels. The voltage gated channels you need to know, we've got voltage gated sodium channels and voltage gated potassium channels. And then these are the potassium leakage channels are part of doing the resting membrane potential and then sodium potassium pump. Now, sodium potassium pump is an active transport pump active transport. And so it is going to make sodium and potassium go in the direction it doesn't want to go. All right. Let's see this. Good. Good. All right. So the cell has to, okay. I was going to do action potential, but now I see I need to do resting membrane potential. First, we're going to do resting membrane potential. Resting membrane potential. Potential is an electrical term, and I apologize for it, but I got nothing to do with it, okay? And it is just the description of what is that difference across the membrane, right? We're going to start with how does the resting membrane potential get set up? And then we'll see when you spring the trap and action potential happens. After we do that, we will talk about, well, what sprung the trap to start the action potential, and that will be the graded potentials. So let's look here, okay? Now, we talked about how all of your cells are relatively negative on the inside and positive on the outside, and this difference is called the potential. Setting this thing up so that your cell is, your neurons are negative on the inside and positive on the outside, setting that thing up is called establishing the resting membrane potential. Establishing resting membrane potential. So setting it up so that things are more negative on the inside and more positive on the outside, that is not the way those ions wanted to move. Sodium wants to go inside, potassium wants to leave. The positives want to go to where the negatives are. That's the way, if these things were all free to move, that's where they would go. How they got so wrong, well, that's gonna take energy. So that's going to take active transport and our active transport protein, we only have one of them. Our active transport protein is the sodium potassium pump, okay? So in order to get things set up so that they are 
positive on the outside and negative on the inside. In order to do that, the cell had to use active transport and active transport uses ATP. And that is why the sodium potassium pump, its other name is sodium potassium ATPase. Ase indicates that technically it's an enzyme. What does it do? It rips apart ATP. Ripping apart ATP is what any enzyme does in order to get energy to make something happen like active transport, okay? So here's what happens to make the resting membrane potential happen. You have got lots of these proteins called sodium potassium pumps or sodium potassium ATPase in the membrane of the nerve cell. And it is using a molecule of ATP every time it forces three sodiums to leave the cell and forces two potassiums to come into the cell. Now, in this particular little image that I've got here, the potassiums are the little triangles and the sodiums are the little circles. They're both positively charged. The reason that the inside is relatively negative is that there's more pluses out here, more pluses. So, um, okay. So you can imagine if you force three things to leave and force two things to come in, well, that means that every time you use an ATP, you are um, creating an imbalance where there are going to be more pluses out here than there are inside the cell, right? But that's not all. The next thing that's going to happen is the potassium leakage channel is periodically going to open up. So follow me here. We forced potassium to come in the cell, we forced sodium to go out of the cell. So if sodium had its way, it would try to come back into the cell but it's not allowed to go straight across the cell membrane. And at this moment, there is no channel that is open for it. But these potassium leakage channels, not all the time, but every so often, they'll let a potassium leave. Remember the potassiums got too crowded on the inside. Well, now look what happened. We forced, let's do it again. We forced three sodiums to leave, we forced two potassiums to come in, and already we were getting too many positive charges on the outside and not enough positive charges on the inside. And then we opened up potassium leakage channels. But remember, every substance wants to go from where it is more crowded to where it is less crowded. So potassium wants to leave the cell. And when these potassium leakage channels open, and they just do it periodically, then the sodium still can't come in, but the potassium will leave. So now we've got a ton of positive stuff on the outside and not very much positive stuff on the inside. And on the inside, you actually have quite a number of negatively charged things like phosphate and negatively charged proteins, and that's not a question on the exam. All right, next thing. The next thing is this term, electrochemical gradient. Electrochemical, oops, chemical gradient. We describe the establishment, the establishment of the resting membrane potential as establishing an electrochemical gradient. Sounds really sciencey, but a gradient, you know, is like that difference between higher and lower. Right? We talked about it with osmosis, we talked about it with diffusion. And it is a gradient that is chemical more sodiums outside than inside, so the sodiums want to come in. Technically, more potassiums inside than outside, so the potassiums want to leave. So that's the chemical gradient, but there's also an electrical gradient. More positive on the outside than the inside, more negative on the inside. So there are two reasons why sodium, now it really badly wants to come inside the cell. One is because positive is attracted to negative, and the other is because sodiums are crowded here and not there, the electrochemical gradient. So establishing the electrochemical gradient is setting up the resting potential or the resting membrane potential 
basically all three of the same things. Alrighty? Now, we've set things up so sodium really wants to come into the cell and potassium kind of wants to leave. We're about to have an action potential, an action potential. And in the action potential, what's going to happen is the electrical nature of this part of the membrane or this part of the membrane is going to flip. How did it flip? Graded potentials, haven't talked about them yet, right? But when that other thing happens, it's going to flip the charge and that is the proper voltage to open our voltage-gated sodium channel. And when the voltage-gated sodium channel opens, then vroom, all of the sodiums are gonna come rushing in. Now, keep in mind that I just opened up this voltage-gated sodium channel and sodium came in. But what happened over here? Now this part of the membrane has had its voltage flipped. So now this channel is going to open and sodium is going to come rushing in. And that's going to flip this charge across the membrane. So now this channel is going to open, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when voltage-gated sodium channels open, when voltage-gated sodium channels are opened because the membrane has shifted, and by the way, this part right here, that would be the axon hillock. When that voltage changes there at the axon hillock, then it'll start opening up voltage-gated sodium channels. And when one voltage-gated sodium channel opens, it will change the membrane of the, the, it'll change the charge of the next part of the membrane, and that'll open up the next voltage-gated channel, ditto, which opens the next, which opens the next, which opens the next. So it's kind of like dominoes falling, right? You tip one domino over, it tips over its friend, who 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 tips over its friend. Another way of saying that is, let's go backwards. Let's put it on here. Another way of saying that is to say that action potentials are all or nothing, or it could, we could say all or none, all or none. The action potential happens in the axon and it happens because voltage-gated channels get opened up and it either happens or it doesn't. Why? Because when you open up that first voltage-gated uh, sodium channel, that's going to tip, that's going to open up the next voltage channel, which opens the next, which opens the next. Open. So if you start, if you start an action potential, um, sorry, if you start an action potential way up here, way up here, then that voltage-gated sodium channel will let in sodium, which will open up that channel, which will let in sodium, which will open up that channel, which will let in sodium, da, 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 all the way down the length of the axon. So we set up the resting membrane potential by using energy, and then the cell rests until the until something changes the voltage here at the axon hillock. And when that happens, and as that action potential goes down the length of the axon, when it finally gets down here to the axon terminal, it opens up voltage-gated calcium channels that cause the synaptic end bulbs to exocytose to release little chemical molecules called neurotransmitters. And the neurotransmitters are going to be the, um, no, that's not what I mean. The, are going to be the ligands in our, that will cause the ligand gated channels to open. So cell body or dendrite, that's where we get ligand gated channels. That's where we get graded potential. And these can be small or big or even negative, small or big or even negative. And that's going to be an important point as we move forward. Now, the entire neuron um, resting membrane 
for any individual cell is all the same. So we're just going to slide past that. All right. One more time. The sodium potassium pump pumps three sodiums out every time it uses an ATP and simultaneously pumps two potassiums in. That already creates more positives on the outside and the inside. But then the potassium leakage channel is going to allow none of the sodiums to come in, but will allow some of the potassiums to leave. So now we really have a lot of positive charge on the outside and less positive charge on the inside. And yeah, technically there's more negative charge on the inside. But this is our electrochemical gradient. Our electrochemical gradient is lots of uh, um, ions on the outside that want to get in. That's the chemical gradient. And then the charge is also drawing them in. If something changes the, um, if something changes the, this, uh, the electricity across this part of the membrane, see how it got changed? That opens up the voltage gated channel. Once the voltage gated channel is open, then positively charged ion comes in. When the positively charged sodium comes in, it changes the electricity across the next little tiny segment of membrane, and that'll open up this voltage gated channel, which will let sodium in, which will change this membrane, which will open up this channel, and it's like dominoes falling. All righty. Um, I will start here at the beginning of the